Times Square. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome to this rummage through Auntie BBC's bottom drawer as we reveal a stack of embarrassing bloomers from top shows such as Jonathan Creek, Hope and Glory, Good Night Sweetheart, and hang a few careers out to dry. <laughs> but stop! I hear you cry. Not for the first time. There you go. Is it fair to pick on these poor people working for the BBC? They're obviously desperate, and by the looks of things, not quite the full shilling. <laughs> True enough. But sympathy has no place in this show, particularly for those foolhardy enough to flout one of the eternal laws of television. If you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Or rather a small one. Because although this guy looks pretty big, he's actually the smallest bear in the world. The Malayan sun bear. Hello! <laughs> you get... <laughs> You know, sometimes in the animal world, some astonishing relationships happen by accident. Our next story, ouch. <laughs> Very unusual. It's about a cat that takes care of a... Oh, get off me foot. Well, see for yourself. And what sort of zoo is this? I mean, is this more of a, a petting zoo than, than your standard sort of zoo? It is very similar to... <laughs> it is very similar to your standard type of zoo in the fact that we do have quite a few exotic animals. Defeat is something most politicians have to come to terms with sooner or later. But Henry here, unbowed by his first experience, says he won't be asking for a recount. David Cornock and Henry. <laughs> BBC Wales today. Parliament dog of the year show. And above all else, they're super successful. <laughs> <laughs> above all else, they've got really sharp teeth and their tempers run out and they just want the food and they don't want to play anymore, do they? <laughs> what do you mean one more? I've only got five <laughs> fingers. <laughs> well, here they here they are, they're called Moses and Eli. And they've just eaten my script. And so it's just as well we've reached the end of the program. So it's good night from me. <laughs> tell you, I've, I've just sat in a pool of wee. <laughs> the temperature, really, when I first sat down, it was the warmth that gave it away. The blessed Rolf Harris there doing something he wished that he did or he didn't. But even if Rolf, the master of mixing with animals, can come to a sticky end occasionally, what price the rest of us? Especially when, as the unfortunate Maria Veronese is about to discover, getting that perfect shot runs the risk of ruffling some feathers. By injecting an ostrich egg like this, scientists hope the baby chicken side would take on all the characteristics of a mower. That means if the scientists are successful, the baby chick mower, there, there, the mower chick. Thing is, I need them in shot, really. Right. God, I'm just, I just don't want them to go for my eyes. By injecting an ostrich egg like this, the scientists hope the baby chicken side will take on all the characteristics of a mower. That means if the scientists are successful, the mower chick will go to three times the size of the... Thanks. By injecting an ostrich egg like this, scientists hope the baby chicken side will take on all the characteristics of a mower. That means if the scientists are successful, the baby mower chick will grow to at least three times the size of these ostriches. <laughs> Go away. 
go away. Oh. <laughs> By injecting an ostrich egg like this, scientists hope. Right, <clears throat> serious. Try and do it quickly. <laughs> By injecting an ostrich egg like this, scientists hope the baby chicken side would take on all the characteristics of the mother. <laughs> By injecting an ostrich egg like this, the <laughs> By injecting, <laughs> by injecting, <laughs> by injecting an ostrich egg like this, the scientists hoped the baby chicken side would take on all the characteristics of a moa. That means if the scientists are successful, the moa chick could grow to at least three times the size of these ostriches. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit nasty. <laughs> A smile? Yeah. You're starting to look worried, am I? Yeah. <laughs> By injecting an ostrich egg like this... Yeah. By injecting an ostrich egg like this, the scientists hope the baby chicken side will take on all the characteristics of a moa. <laughs> <clears throat> Things we do for the BBC. <laughs> I've ever seen the things you do for the BBC indeed but there are people at the BBC who are worse off than me think of the poor warm-up man on Panorama <laughs> the costume designer everybody else on Richard Whiteley unbriefed <laughs> Gabby Roslin's makeup artist or indeed the stars of a hugely popular long-running comedy series who on this evidence regularly get their goose cooked The next line is me saying that I'm not able to do it, so we better do it again. Have your fling. It's all part of prison wife syndrome. Husband's inside. Woman has normal, wifely, womanly, womanly <laughs> desires. <laughs> Have your fling. It's all part of Woods and his wives. <laughs> Prisoners Prive singer. Here we go. I feel lucky. I bet I'll do it this time. <laughs> but have your fling. It's all part of... Fling. <laughs> oh, Sharon, what's happening? What? 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 All right. Yeah, all right. We're coming. We're coming. Oh. <laughs> Morning! <laughs> what are you doing here? We're going to a wedding, aren't we? But you said you were... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. You don't think it's mine, do you? it's yours. How? How do you think you're daft, Pillock? Kimberly told me. <laughs> what? She wrote to you. She sent you letters. You ignored them. Ignored your own baby. Garth, how could you? Mum, I didn't. She was so angry with me when I went to France. She... <laughs> Trace, that was Dorian. Some bloke fought to me to do some modelling. He's coming round to see me. <laughs> Trace, that was Dorian. <laughs> She's killing herself now. <laughs> Trace. 
Trace. That was Dorian. Some bloke wants me to do some modelling. He's come around to see me. You don't need me to tell you that the control of programmes here at the old deserted donut is a man with major problems, and I don't mean the halitosis or the body odour. <laughs> no, the controller's specific worry, as a glance at your favourite listings magazine will confirm, is a shortage of good ideas, but there are welcome signs of improvement on that front. Confirmation of the same came when I received an invitation to star in the BBC's forthcoming costume drama, Pride and Prejudice 2. <laughs> Colin Firth is unavailable to reprise the role of Mr. Darcy, so they've, they've called on me to fill his job, please. They knocked me down with a feather when the offer arrived. But I had to join the queue. You know that job you didn't get at St. Phillips? Don't let it get you down. Keep applying. Get off the sinking ship while you can. Oh, Hello and welcome to Change That, coming from the splendid city of... <laughs> it's just such a very strange step. Look at this step. It's a round step and they're square steps. And I can't do round steps, I only do square steps. <laughs> He's not an inspector and his name's not Badger. Well, that's what you called him. Well, that was before we... Hey, it's cool. Oh, Liam. Give him a chance, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All of this... Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Incidents like that going on all the time, it's no wonder the people working for the BBC are a bit on the nervy side. And when you're living on a knife edge, it's inevitable that some people might give the impression that they don't know what they're talking about. Look, it's not my fault. I was trying to do you a favour. I thought you'd be so repulsed by the whole idea that... Anyway, it sounds as if it's perked up their relationship. Perhaps you'll see him in a more assertive night now. Night now? I think something's about to happen. I'm leaving this in your hands. All right, you listen to me, you pervert. If I... It's Ron. Oh, I might have known. He's probably got one of those sex lines on automatic... <laughs> there is another extraordinary length you can go to if you want to have that big chest for your big day. The product is called... Natural push-up. Its manufacturers claim it's made of natural plant oestrogens, which moddy... Ah! <laughs> How much do you reckon you spend a year on clothes? Karen. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's another triumph for British justice to rank alongside the Birmingham Six, the Guildford Four, and sundry other people that they cheerfully went mad with and didn't even think to write a proper line for. <laughs> 
people lay the blame fairly and squarely at Graham Taylor's door, Tommy. Oh, Graham Taylor, isn't it? Sad, wasn't it? Mm, you know. Laura McMenemy, power behind the throne, behind every lot. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to Amsterdam. Do you, I mean, you know, do you want to come or not? <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a bit too relaxed. Yes, yeah, hopeless. Um, don't be trying to, but I'm getting What? <laughs> What's this Eric like? Well... Well what? In fact, why well at all? I'm just having a slight problem with my custard tart. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Sandy. What's this Eric like? Well... Well what? In fact, why well at all? Well, lots of people start a sentence with well. That's right. You just did. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> moving, moving swiftly on, because it's the only way I can cope. We turn to a subject unknown to someone gifted with my delicate, deft, and possibly even dainty touch. I speak, of course, of clumsiness. I had to learn the hard way that you must avoid bumping into anything around here. Many years ago, I accidentally sent the star prize on blankety blank crashing to the studio floor and had the entire cost docked from my salary. And in those days, 75 pence was a lot of money. Not widely known that in the dim and distant days when the BBC was founded and Lord Reith of blessed memory was looking for a motto, the proud legend, nation shall speak peace unto nation, was selected only just ahead of all breakages must be paid for. <laughs> the BBC tradition that this next hapless bunch would have done well to remember. I think you should tell him about the baby. Why? Because I think you might get a different response to the one you're expecting. <laughs> well, I've been Spanish today, I've been back to Tudor times, but I've decided that I would stay in an English wooded garden with a wonderful cup of tea. Nothing could be better. Oh! <laughs> Broke my <laughs> so, Some shops say slow trading is down to streets around the center being closed off. Taxi. Taxi drivers thought they'd struck gold during the World Cup. Oh, bang my <laughs> <laughs> You say nothing, all right? Don't answer any questions. We've got to time this right. Look, don't worry, this could not be better. We're nearly there, okay? <laughs> it was so good, I watched it again. Hurry up, I got my legs stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> And I'll be reporting. <laughs> Bring your own glue. <laughs> there are many attributes for which the BBC is justly famed, all the way from this simple old studio of ours to Shepherd's Bush Roundabout. Perhaps the most precious is its factual accuracy, its determination to ensure every detail is correct, is apparent in all aspects of its broadcasting. Tom. Don't Tom me, Julia. Don't come a cop with me. She's my daughter. Oh. 
I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I know you've been hurt. Do you? She's my father. <laughs> Chaos in custody, boss. Well, haven't they processed those farm workers yet? They can't. They're all giving 15 versions of how to spell their names. And the Home Office interpreter's gone AWOL. I thought a Harry Hypochondriac out there had arranged for someone to be here when the Croatians arrived. He did, to be fair, but they haven't shown. Sorry to interrupt. Would you mind like an update on the boy, James Dean? James Dean? <laughs> And some people are like, Georges at home who are très bien. Anyway, I've not quite finished the challenge, but hey, for me, it's been a personal triumph just beside the Arc de Triomphe. What a pretty... <laughs> so why didn't you just tell Mum about Lionel? Because it's Eric. <laughs> And because Michael works for the BBC, I, I trust you. I <laughs> trust you, Michael. Who works for ITN? I work for ITN. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change my mind. I thought you worked for the BBC. I don't no, trust ITN. No. Back closer to home, though, we hardly have a cloud to be seen. There's a little bit here in the northwest of Spain, of uh, Spain, <laughs> of Europe, and there's some in the northwest there of Scotland. Yes, I've got that right, Scotland. <laughs> We've been through all that, but the fact remains no desk has arrived. Yeah. No, do you have any idea who I am? Right. Good. Yeah, I am the chief marketing... Oh, dear, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> that was the wrong number. Sorry. Vincent Jones. Fern. It's Vernon Jones. <laughs> Vernon Jones. <laughs> well, one of the big predictions this year was that the tuition fees would put students off applying for university and college. That clearly hasn't been the case. And uh, here at UCAS, I'm joined by the Deputy Chief Executive, Anthony McLaren, and also by the Head of Inquiries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. I've got to have something. No, I'm just going to give you a little examination. Put your legs up. Oh. That's it. Lie back. Relax. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still only two metres. Oh, <laughs> Oh, you're not Clive. You're Murray. Oh, <laughs> quite what to expect with the BBC. Only last week I was tiptoeing down the blood bolted corridors of Radio 2, desperately trying to avoid Jonathan Ross. And I turned the corner and bumped into Greg Van Dyke himself. The chimney sweeping brushes went everywhere. <laughs> a minute I thought I was going to get the old tin tack, but he's a decent cove and was soon on his way whistling chim chimney chim, chim <laughs> as if nothing had happened. And I was shocked to learn that even his Cockney accent seemed to have improved in the 30 years or so since he stopped working with Julie Andrews. <laughs> and the truth is, life with Auntie is full of surprises. I do apologise. Now, tomorrow will be a brighter day. Many places, I think, dry for a time, but uh, don't be fooled. There will already be a scattering of showers. Please bring me... It's very hot, yeah? Hot no, this is sweet pepper. This is just sweet, is it? Yes, you could eat it like that. No way. You want to see how easy it fails? Go on, then. 
Yeah, yeah, that boy there. Seasoning. You just season your meat with it. Seasoning. You have just eaten that raw? Mm-hmm. That, you know. Why not burning? Are you the harbour master? Yes. Chief Petty Officer, hmm. Alan Semple. Ah, oh. from uh, Crowthorpe School. Oh, but expect it. <laughs> and I thought most of the time we cope with it, but there was always that threat that uh, you know, uh, basically we, we um, shouldn't allow them to concede. And there's my wife on the phone, probably to congratulate us. <laughs> Hi, Deb. <laughs> D Dad, give us two minutes. I'm just on the time. <laughs> Five, eight, eight, one. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more Daisy. And Daddy Bear. <laughs> um, pass. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is it. Number 20. Va. Rue Médéric, and it's the École Hôtelière de Paris. Oh, <laughs> Adam Shaw is here with the latest business there news. Is. There he is. There was a bit of pantomime magic <laughs> for you, so there should have been a puff of smoke. Anyway, <laughs> our reporter Paul Welsh is there to find out why. Thank you. <laughs> right, let me just try this walk. If I'm starting from what here, so I said, yes, good. Morning, <laughs> Sometimes you can catch people unawares, can't you? That was a fascinating glimpse into the inner world of Paul as he sorted out what he was about to say to you. I think uh, maybe in a second or two he might be ready to say something to you, but uh, no, I think we're going to uh, avoid it for the time being. The missiles are but vivid, realistic imagery. Pictures of men and women that look like real men and women back at the centre of human existence. That imagery might have been endlessly transformed during subsequent centuries, but the fact is that it's still there. Everywhere you look in modern life, you're confronted by a man with a nosebleed. <laughs> what surprises in the air? Here's another little one for you. There are some programs made by the BBC which are so bad, even the controller of programs, a man who generally doesn't understand the meaning of fear, or most of the other words in the dictionary for that matter, <laughs> is too scared to put them out. Now, it all came about when some bright spark, long since banished to the Siberia Broadcasting, or BBC Choice, as it's known, <laughs> and the idea of saving money by combining familiar programs to mount his output, the wheels of the mighty BBC juggernaut creaked into action. And before you knew it, the following series had been committed to videotape. Star Trek, the next generation game, where Captain <laughs> Picard boldly goes where no one has gone before, but only after remembering everything that's been on the conveyor belt. <laughs> Animal Hospital crossed with Ready Steady Cook, as yet untitled, but it does give the chefs a much wider choice of food. <laughs> Indeed, in my own leading role in a follow-up to The Likely Lads. Whatever happened to Terry Wogan? <laughs> we'll never know. For these and many other fine programmes continue to lie untransmitted and forgotten. And then it seems nobody can remember anything round here anyway. I love this time of year. I love the whole thing about December and Christmas. Being with the family, the anticipation, the presents. And, best of all, waking up in... supply of food I made up. Was that the one with the tins of pork luncheon meat, pickled onions, powdered eggs, sandwich spread, bovril and butter beans, yes? Oh no, I think I left it behind on your table. <laughs> oh well, we'll just have to manage with the French loaves, brie, pro proper real, right, good eggs. <laughs> the supply of food I made up. Is that the one with the tins of pork luncheon meat, pickled onions, powdered eggs, sandwich spread, bovril and butter beans? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I left it behind on your table. Oh, well, never mind. We'll just have to manage with the French rolls, brie. I still can't... <laughs> Look 
live in it for a week. <laughs> well, this is the moment we've been waiting for. It's exhibition day. And I'll tell you what, you don't get better venues than this. This is the... Oh! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> this is my granddad's garden shed. They are quite literally blooming marvellous. These wonderful daffodils, the whole blanket of them, can be found near Illington in Norfolk. And they really are quite wonderful. And I can tell you that this particular variety is known as, um, do you know, it's gone completely out of my head. I can't believe it. Just looking for a contact lens. We're well, investigating the death of, um... Most of the population. <laughs> the Mersey Docks and Harbour Company says much of the pierhead will remain untouched by its proposals and public access both here and to the monument will actually be improved. It says the plans will transform a barren, sterile part of a vibrant recreational area. Peter Marshall, Northwest Tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot where I was. <laughs> BBC, and it's all a bit too much to take when you just have to put your foot down and say, right, that's it, enough's enough. It's a thought that, no doubt, running through your mind right now. <laughs> if there's any consolation. I've known that feeling myself over the years, many's the time. I've wanted to give the old controller programs a piece of my mind before realizing that not such a good idea to be carefree with such a scarce natural resource. <laughs> Happily, shortage of grey matter is no handicap to a career with the BBC. People here aren't paid to think. <laughs> or for anything else for that matter. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why it's a tough life here at the cold face of public service broadcasting where trials and tribulations are constant companions. This is the Croatian town of Karlovac, just 20 minutes outside of Zagreb. Until last August, it was still controlled by the Serbian forces. The ensuing battle to reclaim it for Croatia has all but destroyed it. Just like that <laughs> sorry has done this. <laughs> all right, we'll do it now then, yeah? Okay? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> this is the curse. All right. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Could you just move for, for... <laughs> Yeah, all right. We've just got a black band parked in front of number two. Okay. I don't believe this. <laughs> but there's another side to the chase. For nearly a hundred years, coal has been mined from under these hills, leaving behind a vast network of old mine workers. <laughs> find its lies, then the county council could be found to have acted illegally and part or whole of them. Here, they'll come round the last bend. I doubt whether they'll be any wider than that, and when I put my stick in, it's barely two inches. It's an exciting day's racing, and we're all go systems. All go systems! <laughs> yes? Hello, Alan. I think we got cut off. Dad, this is the wrong envelope. This one's just full of sticky labels. No, no, no. That's right, Alan. What? Yes, we've got to stick those on everything tomorrow night. Everything tomorrow night. Why? The blue labels are for bedroom things, 
The green labels are for kitchen things, the orange labels for living room things, and the yellow labels for dining room things. No, no, there aren't any yellow labels. Well, that's because you haven't got a dining room, have you? <laughs> Oh, right. Well, I'll enjoy spending Thursday night doing that, then. Have you marked up your moving calendar accordingly? <laughs> Have you marked up your moving calendar accordingly? Just a minute. You didn't put the top back on. Look, I tried to pull it off. Have you marked up your moving calendar accordingly? Just a minute. <laughs> there, I've done it. Don't forget to pull off your number. Oh, right. It's done, yeah. to bring the curtain down on this batch of aunties bloomers well I will return like old MacArthur to put another collection of television careers out to pasture before running over them with a combine harvester <laughs> it's a living <laughs> <Good night. laughs>